What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Kyle Bradshaw and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the Baja S4 suit from Climb. That's the suit that Chris in front of me is wearing. He's wearing the olive green and I am sporting the gray and blue suit. I've been in this suit about 5,000 miles now and i got to say that it is one of the most pleasurable summer riding suits that I've ever worn. Previous to this I was actually wearing the Dakar pant and then I was using a mesh jacket. Actually I was using the uh, Marrakesh jacket as my off-road riding jacket even though it's more tailored to the street but it, it provided me what I needed. It was very lightweight, it was very flexible and it had tons and tons of airflow. So much airflow that you can't shut it off. There's no way to close off the air coming into the garment. Um, and for Southern California desert riding or for riding like this here in Moab where it's just going to be hot all day long and hot into the evening, it's really the perfect setup. But this year, Climb came out with a new suit. It's called the Baja S4. I've got the full detailed breakdown of that suit. I'll have a link to that up above. You can click on that and go check out that full detailed review if you like. But today I'm going to be talking to you about why I have enjoyed this suit on this trip. Now, three of the guys in our party have purchased this suit and are wearing this suit currently on this ride. Now, the thing I like about the Baja S4 is it is extremely robust. Uh oh, here he goes. Oh! You okay? You okay? You okay? Okay. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. You look like an a action movie star. I mean, the materials remind me of the materials of the Badlands suit. So you've got uh, super fabric in the shoulders and the elbows. You have a chainmail type mesh in more of the pseudo impact areas. So areas that could have impact, like on the front of your thigh or things of that nature. Um, those are more robust um, chainmail. I call it chainmail. I don't know what the, the, the real term is, but it's like a chainmail mesh that's extremely robust. And then you've got the more arid parts of the jacket that uh, are a softer, a smoother, a more flexible material. And uh, that material, of course, is completely mesh and flows a ton of air. But it's in non-impact areas and allows you to have a lightweight, very robust motorcycle jacket and pant. Oh! 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 Whew. That was a good one. Should have just gone straight. Oh well. As far as the jacket goes, external pockets. You have two pockets uh, on each side in the front. You have a cargo pocket on the top that then sits over the top of the hand warmer pocket. Um, the cargo pocket on the top has a flap that closes over the top. And then once you open it up, there's actually a zipper. So you can open the zipper up. Um, most of the time I leave the zipper open and just count on the flap for maintaining my goods. That's on the left hand side. That's where I keep my camera, batteries and things of that nature. On the right hand side, I typically carry my wallet or a phone over on that side. And that side I do zip close. Um, because it's you know, more precious cargo if you will, it's not just like a disposable battery. All the way across the back is a very large pocket. I've attempted to put the Enduro S4 jacket into that pocket and it does not fit. What I'm currently wearing back there or using that pocket for is I have the Zephyr wind shirt. So the Baja S4 jacket is full mesh 100% of the time. There are no vents to open because it is a full mesh material. So that Zephyr wind shirt allows me to put on a layer that's going to block the wind from actually hitting my skin. So first thing in the morning I pull it out or late in the evening when the sun goes down and gets a little bit chilly, that is what I put on over my t-shirt and underneath my Baja S4 jacket. Alright, so we're talking about pockets. We have the two cargo pockets on the outside. Then underneath those cargo pockets are hand warmer pockets. Now, kind of disappointed in the hand warmer pockets, actually the same rougher external material or exterior material, I should say, that the rest of the jacket's made out of. Um, it is open and closed by a single snap halfway um, in the middle of the opening of that pocket. I wish the climb would have put some sort of a fleece lining or something like that on the inside of that pocket as it is a hand warmer pocket and it's nice to have a nice cozy material for your hand to rest upon when you are putting your hands into those pockets while standing around off the motorcycle just kind of kick it back so that's my little feedback to climb there. Now moving down to the pant we have a nice zipper closure that goes all the way up in the waist it then has two snaps that go over the top of the zipper to keep the zipper from coming down. I find this closure 
the system really convenient um, and it doesn't open up if you uh, eat a little bit too much lunch and gain a little bit of weight, it actually works really well. Now speaking of sizing, on the sides of the pants there are two Velcro closers, um, or basically release tabs I like to call them. You can open the Velcro up and either cinch the pants down or loosen them up just a little bit. Now I'm five foot, nine inches tall. I weigh about 200 pounds, 195 on a good day, 200 on a bad day. And I wear the 34 pants and the large jacket and they fit me perfectly. Now the jacket and pant combo come with the D3O level one armor. I do wish that this jacket and pant combo came with the level two armor. Now that is an upgrade that you can do, but that upgrade is gonna cost you, I don't know, probably close to 100 bucks when you get the back pad, the elbows, shoulders, knees, all that shenanigans uh, the pants do have hip pockets for armor uh, it does have a level 1 d3o in the hip area as well um, I have gone down really hard once on this trip in the dirt jumped up and am completely unscathed I really really am happy with the abrasion resistance number one and the impact protection that I get from the d3o armor I think climb has done a great job at pairing materials and protection pieces in order to give us garments that are functional and protective for making us safe when we're out here tearing it up on the highways and the off-road trails. Now speaking about armor, let's talk about uh, fit really quick. On the forearm, there is a band that you can tighten to keep the elbow pads in place. And there's another tab. You can see it on Chris's pants right up there, right at the knee. There's an orange strap that comes across the back. And that orange strap allows you to cinch those pads down so they stay in the proper place for your particular situation, style, or whatever you want to call it. Um, the pants have two pockets, one on each side. Um, um, again, it's a cargo type pocket that has a zipper and a flap closure, just like the cargo pocket that's up on the exterior of the jacket. I forgot to talk about interior pockets on the jacket. Um, up top on one of the chest panels, there is a nice pocket with an elastic top. It's probably meant for a cell phone spot finder or something like that. It's about that perfect size. And then down um, more towards uh, the, the front belly area of the jacket. Um, you've got two other pockets, one on each side. Both of those are zippered. Uh, one is more of a mesh material, and the other one is a satiny type material that is not see-through. Oh, look at this. Gorgeous view. Man. So right now we're on the border of Utah and Colorado. Literally on the other side of those mountain peaks is Colorado, and this side is Utah with Moab being directly behind us. What epic, epic terrain. Okay. Phenomenal, guys. If you've never been to Moab, I highly recommend you come out here and spend at least at least four days, um, up to seven or eight days. I think after that, kind of worn out, you're welcome. Take a look. The colors are starting to shift up here. Some of these trees are starting to just gradually change color. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous here in just a couple weeks. Phenomenal. Anyway, back to the Baja S4. Uh, what was I saying? For leg closure, we have a zipper that goes up from the boot up to about the knee. Uh, it allows getting into the pant relatively easy. You do have to take your boots off in order to get into the pant because it's not a high enough zipper to get in with boots on. Um, but when you do close that zipper around a traditional motocross or adventure touring boot, there's plenty of room for the boot uh, or the pant over the boot, I should say. And uh, once you zip that zipper down, there is a snap closure there's three different adjustments that you can make depending on how thick your boot is and uh, how much play you need there now I typically run mine at the biggest that way the bottom of the boot or the bottom of the pant on the boot is a little bit baggy and uh, allows it to sit really nicely against the boot now just like the majority of climbs gear we have the emergency pocket right here on the forearm this is gonna be a pocket that you would keep your stack card in um, this symbol right here tells emergency response teams that you do have a card inside there and that's the first place they're gonna look in order to find your vitals your stats anything that you want them to know that's on your emergency card information again the material is really phenomenal as far as the amount of breathability we've been out here riding in 90 degree weather so three days ago we did white rim trail man that was epic it was a 150 mile dirt loop above Canyonlands National Park it was exquisite highly recommend that ride to anyone who comes out here but it was 90 degrees while we were out there and this suit allowed the air to flow so yeah you're perspiring underneath the suit um, but that wind flow that comes through acts 
boxes of evaporated cooling. And I gotta say, unless we were stopped standing in direct sunshine, I have not been hot, quote unquote, wearing the suit while riding the motorcycle. Now what I've actually been surprised at is the lack of dirt and dust that I've had on my clothing underneath this suit when I've gotten back to camp at the end of the day. I think that has to do with the fact that it's not just one layer of the mesh on the outside, you've also got the liner mesh. I think that liner mesh really traps that dirt and keeps you from getting through to your lower clothes. It absolutely does not impair the airflow of the jacket, but it does improve comfort. Uh, I have had some mesh jackets in the past that have not had that internal liner um, that is moisture wicking and that is a soft, almost like a basketball short material uh, that allows you to have a nice feeling, silky type material against your skin rather than the rough scratchy material of the exterior armor type mesh that we find in these garments. Any hot I have for you today, this is the Baja S4 suit from Climb. A little bit of a breakdown of that suit and why I've liked wearing it while out here on this Moab trip. It really, I think, has been the best suit or gear combo uh, that I could have chosen for this particular expedition. Anyway, I'm Kyle Bradshaw. If you like your Saturday, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And if you'd like to see more action like this, come directly to your email inbox or your notifications. Please hit that subscribe button and more importantly, the notification bell. Until next time, and as always, take care and ride safe out there. And again, if you get a chance, come to Moab, Utah because the scenery and the riding here is epic.